Hi everyone! If you've been watching my typist video, you are already familiar with the basic. If you're not, just have a look at my previous video, which are going to get you up to speed. Today we're going to cover one of the most important topics in scientific writing, which is adding a bibliography and being able to reference books, paper, articles, journal and web page into our document. So let's get started. Before we dive in, let's quickly discuss why typist citation system is worth getting excited about. First of all, it has native bibliography support. No external tools are needed. It has simple syntax, as you can see here on my screen, that is much easier than Latex Pip Text, and there is no comparison with Word or a tool like Google Docs. You can have multiple citation styles, and many are built in, and you can also create your own. And as you can see here on my screen, I'm actually already showing how to change the style. You have automatic formatting of in-text citation and bibliography entries, so you basically have to do very little work. And it's support for various reference types, so you can cite articles, books, website, and etc. So this is as simple as in LaTeX. Consequently, whether you're writing a research paper, thesis, or technical documentation, Typist makes managing references remarkably straightforward. So let's see how we can get started because I've already shown you an example, but show, let me show you step by step what you need to do. So here we are on the Typist website. If you are locally, you just have to create the file locally, but we can go here in Explore Files and we can see that I have a reference.bib file. Inside here, you will have to add references in with the bib formatting, which is a add key, and then we have the type of document that we want to cite, whether it's an article, a book, a conference proceeding, a website, or another book in this, for instance, example, and then we have curly braces, and then we have author tag, title, journal, year, volume, number, pages, and DOI, for instance, for an article. I never write this one myself, but I always extract them from tools like Mendeley, Zotero, or even from Google Scholar, and we're, go we're going to cover that in a second later on in the video. But you will see how easy it is to export them so you don't have to write them your own. So once you have this reference.bib file that, by the way, you can call in any way, you have to import this file here in your main document. And we can do that with the command hash key bibliography open parenthesis reference.bib. And here in the text, as you can see, it's super simple because we just have to use the at symbol and then we have to reference the same key that we have here. So we can use Smith, Williams, Garcia, and so forth. Typist is super handy because as I'm typing, I can just type the first letter of the author of the first letter of the key, and then Typist is going to give me a suggestion. So here, for instance, we want to add back Smith, and we are going to add that. Typist also supports a new way of adding references, and you can add them directly inside a YAML file, and you can use this syntax here. I think this project is great, and it could be in future a replacement for the .pip file. However, since many of the tools that we are using, usually, as EndNotes, Zotero, Mendeley, already export the file as a bib file, I don't see much of a benefit until that point that those tools will be able to export a YAML file. So for the time being, I would just suggest you to just use the bib file because it might be easier to start. So now that we have seen that we can actually import two types of bibliography, let's see how we can reference them in the text and let me show you a couple of examples. So let's start first with the files that we can see here at the bottom and we can see that if we want to import two files, we can just pass the, in the bibliography command the two files as the first element within parentheses. So here we can reference the reference.bib file and the references.yaml file. 
here in our document and we can reference the uh, kinetics document here. So you can see the Doan et al. and we are referencing this document here. The first thing that you will notice here is that also we have selected a style, which we didn't do it before. So here if I have the elsevier harvard style, and there are many of these styles you can check on their official website, but here if you have this style, we can see that all citation will look like this with the name at all and then the year. But if I ch change it to the Elsevier Vancouver, you will see that we are going to reference article and books using a square parenthesis and inside there is a, basically a number. Let's see other things that are very important and I want to show you. So I want to show you, which you have already seen, the basic citation. And I want to show you another very nice thing that Typist does automatically, which is multiple citation. Let's assume that we want to cite, let's say, three papers, one after each other. And we can see that here we have to add a space in between the citations. So Typist automatically merges them if the style requires it. Uh, let me show you a little bit better because I've added this citation here that is messing up a bit the thing. So now we can see that since Smith, Williams and Garcia are one, two, three, we basically can see that there is this dash. But if we add back the kinetics citation, which is number two, then Typist automatically fixes that for us. However, you can also have them separated if you really want to. So here we are adding a comma between the references and then here you will see that they look one, three and four. Regardless of there is this kinetic citation, they will always look one, two and three. You can see the difference from the top and the bottom. We can also see that if you want to, you don't have to use this command here, which is the at, but you can also use this site command. I think this hat is much easier and flows much better in the text, but these are exactly the same thing. So the hat or this hash key site open parenthesis and then here we have this command here, they are exactly the same. And in fact, we can see that we have one and one. If you have a unique key that has strange characters that will break the compilation and neither of these approach or this one with the at would work, you can always use the more verbose, even verbose command, which is site, open parenthesis, label, and then the unique key. But again, I would suggest you to basically change the bib file and change the unique key in, the, um, in your file. So that is going to be much easier. Uh, if you want to, you can also uh, add different options that they will work a little bit differently based on the style. So let me revert back to the hardware style because we can see already like some of the differences. So here, if you want, you can pass the page number and if you use the hardware style, you can use either the square bracket or the more verbose approach, which is site, and then you can add a supplement, which is the page number, and you will see how they render here in your document. You can also use the author, and basically this is going to just print, see, the author names, Smith and Johnson, or you can use the prose, and the prose is always very nice, because if you want to say Smith and Johnson, and then open parenthesis 2023, they discover blah blah blah, you can actually have it in a prose form that is going to be going to be flowing very well in your text. In LaTeX again is a little bit more complex to do that. You can also change midway for some specific references. Again, I don't recommend that because I think it's not a good practice to change it in within the text. If you want to change your style, again, as I showed you before, change it here at the bottom. However, if you want to, you can change always the style. So you will see that this citation number three will always look like this, regardless of uh, the text, the style that we select here at the bottom inside the bibliography. And finally, just to recap, we can see that all these three commands, basically, they all have the same output both if I use the Elsevier Harvard style, but also if I use the Elsevier Vancouver style. So here they all look the same. 
Finally, the other thing that I want to show you is that of course you don't need to have two BIP files, but you can have just one and nothing changes. In this case, we may get an error if you just have put back these kinetics because of course Typist is not finding this reference because it's only defined in the YAML file. And we can also pass a custom title and we can either remove it by passing an empty string or we can say ciao, for instance, and this is going to be our new title of the bibliography. And finally, here I want to show you that you can always add a new section after the bibliography. So it's entirely up to you where you want to place it because this is going to be just following the structure of your document. So if you add a section after the bibliography, this section will appear after, which for instance could be the appendix. And this is very useful to add appendix because you just add them after the bibliography. So let me show you, for instance, how easy it is to connect Typist with a reference manager. So unfortunately on my computer I only have Zotero installed, but I can want to show you a couple of options. So here I have Zotero open, we can go into File, Export Library, and then we can say Export BIP Text, and then we can say the Export File, and then we just press OK, and this is going to export it. An even better approach, at least in my opinion, is to create a shortcut. So let me show you how I did that. So if I click on this paper here and I press Command Shift C in my computer, automatically um, the reference will be copied in a BIP format and then I can press Ctrl V and just basically have it here saved in my document. In order to do that, you just have to go into Zotero and then here at the top we go to settings and then here we just have to bring up the uh, Zotero setting and you can see that under export here, item format, we can say bib text and we can also choose different ways but I usually keep it to bib text and you can see that the command is command shift C. I think that's super handy because rather than having just one big file, which of course you can have it, I mean, you're free to have it. Every time I publish a paper, I like to have the references related to that specific paper in my bib file, just to keep things a little bit cleaner. But of course you can also export all your library and then actually that's also very useful because you can reference the, um, the paper. One thing that I want to show you is that if I go back to my example here, we have full to equal to true, which I would discourage you to have it. And this is not the default because you see that now we are citing this standard here, despite we did not reference this standard here in the document. So if you set full equal to false, or you just comment that line, which is the default, then we are going to be referencing in our document only the articles, books, uh, website and so forth, which are actually referencing in the document, which I think is a much better approach. I'm sure you may be facing some issues. So the main common issues that you're going to be facing is that if you are trying to reference something that you have not imported in your file. So here we can see that we have uh, only a uh, six option to choose but of course if i type federico i'm going to get an error and the reason why i'm getting an error is because uh, is missing and we don't have that key in the bib file so always uh, just cite documents that are already included in the bib file but that's very easy to check because type is like help when us when we add the at symbol Finally, just be careful with uh, some Unicode characters. So typist handle uh, uh, you, like many characters, but be careful when you are adding them to the bib file. Sometimes you may have some issues. But for most issues, just basically check the main bib file and ensuring that the citation key uh, match what you have written in the text. And if you experience any issue, please feel free to write a comment here in the video and also write a comment if you enjoyed the video just to let me know, but also check on the typist documentation which is continuously getting updated. Before we end today's video, I would like to take a second to remind you to like and subscribe to my channel if you found this video interesting. It really means a lot to me. 
I really am very grateful that you watched the video till the end, but I would really appreciate if you could take a second to like and subscribe to this channel, which is free, but it really helps a lot. If you also feel very generous because you've learned something new today, you can also support my channel by joining here as a member on YouTube or by buying me a coffee. I would really appreciate that, but I completely understand if you can't. I really hope that today's video was informative and now I hope you can easily add your bibliography to your document. If something wasn't clear, please let me know down in the video comment section below, ask me a question and I will do my best to reply as soon as possible. Thank you very much for listening and I will see you in the next video.